KKL 9 News at 9 starts right now. And up next on KKL 9 News, another U.S. chopper goes down in Iraq. No one survived. Was it shot down? We'll have the latest on another deadly day in the battle for Iraq. Plus, they fought against them in Recall, California, but today, the state's influential teachers union sat down and they worked out a deal with Governor Schwarzenegger. The details are coming up. And President Bush says it's time for another giant leap in the manned space program. Good evening, I'm Sylvia Lopez. And I'm Dave Clark. This is KCAL 9 News at 9. You're watching KCAL 9 News at 9. It was another very costly day for U.S. forces in Iraq. Nine Americans are killed after their military helicopter goes down, possibly the result of ground fire from guerrillas. And a very, very close call for dozens of proven aboard a military transport plane that was also attacked. KCAL 9's Carrie Kilbride has details for us. Carrie? Sylvia Dave, the helicopter went down near the city of Fallujah, still a hotbed of anti-American activity. If it was hit by a missile, it wasn't the only attack on a U.S. aircraft today. A huge transport jet took a missile near Baghdad and the pilot did a pretty good job in getting it down safely. The Black Hawk made an emergency landing, but all nine soldiers on board were killed. The cause of the crash is unknown at this time. A quick reaction force has secured the area, and an investigation is underway. Locals say it was shot down by insurgents. A farmer says a rocket hit the tail, and the chopper burst into flames. I saw a missile hit the helicopter. It went down over there. It had a red cross on it. So far, no U.S. plane has been shot down, but today, a close call. Insurgents, using a shoulder-launched missile, hit a C-5 Air Force transport, like this one, with 63 people on board just after it took off from the Baghdad airport. The pilot managed to make an emergency landing, and no one was hurt. Another U.S. soldier was killed, more than 30 wounded, when insurgents fired mortar rounds into a military base just outside of Baghdad. U.S. commanders say it could have been worse. All of our commanders take active force protection measures. Uh, the clothes we wear, uh, the way we protect our bases, uh, the facilities that they live in, uh, without those force protection measures, uh, the numbers would have been much, much higher. <laughs> the coalition is hoping a new prisoner amnesty program will put a stop to some of the violence. Family members cheered today as more than 100 inmates were freed from the country's most famous prison. They must pledge not to get involved in any anti-coalition activities. We classify them as low-level uh, violators, minor violators, and we believe those individuals can be won over. And as a goodwill gesture, U.S. officials are planning to eventually release more than 500 other prisoners, hopefully winning the hearts of some. But as evidenced by the attacks on Americans today, not all. Sylvia, now back to you. All right, Carrie. There were tears of joy today near Baghdad as the U.S. released scores of Iraqis being held in one of Saddam's infamous prisons. <laughs> there was plenty of chaos during that release as two trucks carrying detainees pulled out of the prison. Friends and family of the prisoners followed close behind in their cars. The coalition says it's still on track to release 500 detainees over the next few weeks. A new report contradicts the Bush administration's insistence that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. After six months of interviewing Iraqis and weapons inspectors and reviewing intelligence, a report by the Carnegie Endowment says Iraq ended its chemical weapons program in the mid-1990s. It also says the Bush administration exaggerated the weapons threat. The representations by senior administration officials um, uh, show a fairly systematic um, misrepresentation of the facts over and above the intelligence failings um, with respect to chemical and biological weapons. Secretary of State Colin Powell disputes the report's findings, saying the administration did have solid information before the war that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Well, Sylvia, Pakistani officials are stepping up the hunt for Osama bin Laden and other terrorists. Today, the Pakistani army raided a region near the Afghan border where bin Laden may be hiding. The anti-terror offensive is Pakistan's second major operation in that region in recent months. A new bin Laden tape recently came out where he asked Muslims to attack U.S. forces and their allies.
Well, every homecoming for American troops is special, but the one you're about to see now involves a U.S. serviceman who's also a U.S. senator. A convoy of fire trucks led the homecoming for Pennsylvania Republican Senator John Pippi and dozens of Army engineers that he served with in Iraq. Pippi was greeted by his wife and two children. Well, we, we're just happy to see our families. Uh, these guys have done a great job, and uh, we're looking forward to when the rest of the company, we have a couple people still out there, and when they get back. So. And I was real excited when I home. It was like the greatest Christmas gift ever, because like, I learned on Christmas that my dad was going home. Senator Pippi spent 11 months building roads in Iraq. All of the members of his unit made it back. Today marks the second anniversary of the tough education reform law, also known as No Child Left Behind. In Knoxville, Tennessee today, President Bush congratulated students at an elementary school where test scores have improved drastically. That law is specifically designed to help minority students. African-American children uh, have been, have suffered from being in circumstances where they're not expected to learn and they become self-fulfilling prophecy. Critics of No Child Left Behind say it's underfunded and forces some schools to make cuts in art and music programs to compensate for that. Well, tomorrow, Governor Schwarzenegger releases his budget proposals for the coming year. It's something we've been waiting for. Sure, everybody's waiting on this, and we've been watching the governor as he has charmed legislators as well as the citizens all across the state as he tries to get California out of the red. But he's also trying to get the support of some very powerful allies in his own way. KCAL 9's Glenn Walker is joining us now in studio with more on just what he's doing. Glenn? Well, Dave and Sylvia, in his first State of the State address delivered this past Tuesday night, Governor Schwarzenegger said he could sell anything. Well, tomorrow he will try to sell his first state budget to the state legislature, which, as you know, is controlled by Democrats. But he has already sold it to one of California's most powerful unions. Keep up the good work, okay? Words of encouragement from the governor and for the governor as he toured a Sacramento middle school. Joining Schwarzenegger, several state education leaders, including representatives of the California Teachers Association. The teachers union has now endorsed the governor's proposed budget cuts to education. We have made a, a, a budget agreement, a deal with the, that will help our fiscal crisis. The way he involved us in this budget proposal is a first, and we appreciate it. It's still very good. At the heart of this pact, a concession by state schools to forego $2 billion of a $4 billion funding increase that is set for next year. Schwarzenegger called the pact a replacement for Proposition 98. That 1988 initiative requires that a set percentage of state revenue fund K-14 through education. At the same time, my budget would increase kindergarten through 12th grade education for every student in California, which basically means we would increase per pupil funding. The amount of that funding per pupil increases $200, and community colleges would receive at least $200 million in new revenue next year. Schwarzenegger also agreed to pick up $105 million in pension fund increases, which was the responsibility of local school districts. The proposed budget fully funds vital programs such as reduced class size and special education. We hope the legislature will help us implement the agreement. We thank Glenn. But at the state capitol, some members of the state legislature say they are more concerned about proposed cuts in other programs, such as funding senior health care. What you've done is left the most vulnerable, the people who don't have a big clout and loud voices, to fend for themselves. It's not a part of a package that's the whole budget. It's a side deal. I think that, you know, it's a good attempt to reach out to CTA and to negotiate with them, but just because the governor has agreement with them doesn't mean that the legislature has an agreement with them. Knocking down bureaucracy, that's what it's about. It's about putting the students before politics. Well, one group of students may beg to differ. College students will take a hit in the governor's budget. Undergraduate tuition fees in both the UC and Cal State University systems could rise another 10 percent, with fees for graduate school rising a whopping 44 percent. Add this to the expected battles over health care and the Indian gaming casinos, the backroom negotiations and arm twisting are just beginning. I'm Glenn Walker, KCAL 9 News.
Breaking news now. New details on that mountain lion attack that we have been telling you about during the 8 p.m. broadcast here on Channel 9. Yes, yeah, Sylvia. Derek Bell is flying over Whiting Ranch now in Sky 9. Derek, what do you know? That's right. We're showing you the command post where the cat is. That mountain lion is right now. We're going to show you some tape that we shot just in the last hour. That is of sheriff's deputies right there pulling out that mountain lion. They shot it in some heavy brush. Now, this all began shortly before sunset today when one mountain biker was attacked. She was helped by a couple of other mountain bikers. When the uh, sheriff's deputies moved into the scene, they noticed that there was another mountain bike that was not accounted for. As they pulled out to the area, they found the cat hover, or actually standing over another victim. That person apparently was deceased. So two people were attacked. One person was transported to a local area hospital with severe injuries. The second person died at the scene. Now, they, they, uh, as we just said before, they do have the mountain lion, which they believe was involved in both of these attacks. The uh, state fish and game officials right now are going to take custody of that mountain lion. They're going to compare the claw and teeth marks of that cat, do blood work on it to make sure that, in fact, they do have the cat that was involved. However, from um, our vantage point here in Sky 9, this uh, mountain lion was shot just a short distance from where all of this uh, activity took place earlier today. This is Derek Bell, live in Sky 9, back to you in the studio. Okay, Derek, thanks a lot. Well, another news tonight and still ahead for you. The state teachers union may be happy with the governor's budget vision, but some other unions weren't standing beside Arnold Schwarzenegger at today's big announcement. In fact, they were outside the Capitol protesting the governor's plans. That's coming up. Also, former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown, out of a job in politics for the first time in a long time, but he's not out of the spotlight for long. And still ahead, former Secretary of State Bill Jones, ready to challenge California's junior senator Barbara Boxer at the polls. We have got a lot of politics to analyze tonight. We're going to hear from both sides. We've got strategists Kerman Maddox and Alan Hoffenbloom. That's coming up at 9.30. Now, Dave Clark, Sylvia Lopez, and Byron Miranda with weather. Watching KCAL 9 News at 9. Now, get today's top news stories and weather. Simple, easy to read, and sent directly to your computer. Visit KCAL9.com and sign up for KCAL 9 News Blast. Southern California weather. It can turn ugly in a hurry. So, as storm season approaches and severe weather threatens, count on the KCAL 9 weather team. Our Skyview Doppler accurately pinpoints and tracks dangerous storms right down to where you live. And KCAL 9's team of meteorologists has the experience to predict where storms will strike and the information you need to keep your family safe. When Southland skies threaten, weather the storm with the KCAL 9 weather team. Cash or charge? Yo. It's all on the wrist. Mm. How about that one? You know it's January when you're maxed out. It's platinum. That's why Domino's gives you a deal when you need it most. Get two medium two-topping pizzas for only $13.99. That's two medium two-topping pizzas for $13.99. Make it a meal at Domino's Buffalo Wings and a two-liter bottle of Coca-Cola for an additional price. Get the door. It's Domino's. You heard they were coming. You saw them at the auto show. The new... There was a push today to make sure that nursing homes don't become victims of California's budget crisis. This was the scene in Sacramento today. Dozens of nursing home workers protesting what they fear will be wage cuts when Governor Schwarzenegger releases his budget tomorrow. They say that under the governor's plan, employees would lose $100 million this year alone. So, Sylvia, big question. What will the fallout be here in the Southland if the Budget Act falls on those nursing homes? As KCAL 9's Michelle Geely reports now, the impact will be costly. Hello, Michelle B. Hello, and Nursing home patient Arlen Shelby is getting a home-cooked meal of greens and black-eyed peas from her nursing assistant, Rosalind Norford. It's one of many special touches this dedicated caregiver provides to her senior patients every day at Fountain Care Center in Orange. Some of them doesn't have families, so... She is who we look for when we come. If we see her, we know we're going to get good care. The fear is that things might change when the governor announces his new budget tomorrow for California, that funding for nursing homes will be cut, 
including a program for wage increases for staff members who in many cases make less than $10 an hour. It means that in California, approximately 28 nursing homes would have to shut down. Uh, and, and if you reduce the pay to the workers, in some areas they already have 100% turnover every year. Local nursing home staff, patients, family members, and elderly advocates held a rally to publicize the need to increase, not decrease funding. Thousands of postcards reminding Governor Schwarzenegger should be arriving in Sacramento. Funding problems worry Radine Colazzo, who recently became a paraplegic from a spinal infection. I'm only 39 years old. You know, with the lack of, with the budget cut, that'll mean lack of, um, therapy and that's what I'm here for. I'm here for rehab. Budget cuts will mean the need for a second job for nursing assistant Rosalind Norford and likely less personalized care for her clients. I know if the budget cut happens I might not be able to spend quality time by talking with her. I'll come in and say let's do this. We got to get this exercise done and move on. Michelle Geely, KCAL 9 News. It's been a generation since Americans last set foot on the moon. And you know what? That's too long for President Bush. Still ahead for you? His vision for the next giant leap for America's space program. And this one won't make it to outer space, but two adventures are ready to go global in their strange new airplane. On the day, the Dow was up 63 points to almost 10,600. And for the first five trading days of the year, it's up 139 points. The NASDAQ up 23. Now today's top volume stocks and California companies of interest. Closing bell on KCAL 9 News brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. World-class adventurer Steve Fawcett is at it again. This time he wants to be the first pilot to fly around the world by himself without any stops. He got the first look at the specially designed aircraft he plans to do it in as it was unveiled in the Mojave Desert today. Through a curtain of smoke and strobe lights, the Virgin Atlantic Global Flyer was unveiled for the world. <laughs> But even all that fanfare seemed to pale compared to the excitement of adventurer Steve Fawcett and Virgin Atlantic Chief Richard Branson as they prepare for Fawcett's first solo, non-stop flight around the world. Um, we'd all like to welcome you very much for um, this historic day, uh, the unveiling of uh, Virgin Global Flyer. Um, it is perhaps the last great aviation record left here on Earth. Four years in design and construction and sponsored by Virgin Atlantic at a secret cost, Global Flyer is a single-engine jet with a 114-foot wingspan and an ultra-light structure. Considered the world's most efficient jet plane, when it takes off, 82% of its weight is fuel. And when it lands, it's so light, it needs parachutes to ease it down. It's not only exciting from uh, a pilot achievement uh, standpoint, but also in the advancement of um, airplane technology. Branson met Fawcett when they were both trying to break another record, flying solo around the world in hot air balloons. Fawcett finally accomplished that goal in 2002, but this time he admits some butterflies will be up there with him. I'm nervous that uh, the airplane is beautiful. Uh, I think the design is uh, excellent. Global Flyer will fly at speeds greater than 287 miles an hour, at up to 52,000 feet, where it will seek the jet stream's push to give it the range to fly around the world in just three days. But I am protected in case I do doze, uh, doze off. I'm protected with an autopilot. More extensive test flights will be conducted before Fawcett takes off sometime between November and March, when the jet stream can give him the best push. The flight will originate from somewhere in the central U.S. to allow Global Flyer to remain over land while it gains altitude and also to ensure it is still overland at the end of its flight.
Dave? You know, picking up on that, we have all been tantalized all week by those live pictures coming back from Mars. But more exciting than sending a rover to the red planet, how about putting astronauts on Mars? This is part of the long-range plan for the space program that President Bush is getting ready to unveil. KCAL 9's Carter Evans is live at JPL. He's got all the late details, Carter. And Dave, people here at JPL are finding out about this news, though it's not coming from official sources. They're finding out about it on the Internet, and they know that it is very possible that they could soon see pictures like this one, that giant leap for mankind again. Though there is no official word, the Mars mission here could play a big role in the president's new plan. Since the historic liftoff of Apollo 11 in July 1969, and then that giant leap for mankind, 12 Americans have taken steps on the moon. The last step was 31 years ago, and according to senior White House officials, President Bush wants to change that, and they say he'll make the announcement next week. And those White House sources say the president wants to establish a long-term human presence on the moon, a living habitat, and that's not all. In less than a week after a successful unmanned landing on Mars and the first high-resolution images of the Red Planet, White House officials say the president also wants to send Americans to Mars, but that could be a decade away. At the Jet Propulsion Lab, where the Mars rover is controlled, officials aren't talking publicly about the president's space plan, saying there is just not enough information yet. But White House officials say these high-resolution images and other information gathered from the rover could provide a roadmap for the first human expedition of the Martian surface. Now, former Ohio Senator John Glenn, by the way, the first American to orbit the Earth, said the nation needs to complete the International Space Station first before moving forward on plans to build on the moon and still no word on where the money for all of this projects, all of these projects, will come from. Live at JPL, I'm Carter Evans, KCAL 9 News. Right, Carter, thanks a lot. Still ahead for you, the Southland has gained some new political clout at the state capitol. Up next, a freshman assemblyman from Los Angeles moves to the top of the heap in Sacramento. And Willie Brown. He may be out of office in San Francisco, but he's never far away from the spotlight in California politics. So what's next for the x mayor But first... Here are your winning lotto numbers. The Daily 3, 0, 3, and 6. And if you like the Fantasy 5, how about 19, 20, 31, 34, and 39? Good luck. What makes Ford number He's now the youngest mayor ever in the history of San Francisco. 36-year-old Gavin Newsom was sworn in earlier today. Newsom thanked former mayor Willie Brown for giving him his first major break in politics. Mayor Brown, I want to thank you for more than just your kind words. I want to thank you in particular for believing in a 27-year-old when you did, when you took the time to recognize me and appoint me to the presidency of the Parking and Traffic Commission. Newsom succeeds Willie Brown, who termed out. Brown has been in politics for more than 40 years. You know what, Sylvia, the inauguration, speaking of Willie Brown, the inauguration of the new San Francisco mayor brings to an end a real era in state politics. For the first time in decades, Willie Brown will not be in office. I want to be your mayor. And they got him. And for eight years, Willie Brown was known as the mayor of San Francisco. Willie Brown will leave office this week. Now, while he sees himself as an idealist, he admits it was something more that kept him in politics for 40 years. Power is frankly more addictive than I would imagine uh, crack cocaine would be. And believe me, there's no cure. A fiery speaker, attorney, and California legislator, Willie Brown began making national news at the 1972 Democratic the Convention. Give me back my delegation! In the 1980s and 90s, he wielded incredible power as Speaker of the House for nearly 15 years. You've been called flamboyant, brash, backroom broker. Are you all of those things? All of the above, and frankly, none of the above. Uh, Critics say Willie Brown brokered deals through political patronage, his style of insider politics compared to those of Tammany Hall. 
There were various corruption investigations, but nothing illegal ever turned up. But his deal-making also earned him a reputation for getting things done when no one else could. While he hobnobbed with the rich and the famous, Willie Brown says what got him headlines was irreverent behavior, especially around news reports. They can always BS with Willie Brown and almost for sure come out with something that's a little wacko. That makes the star status. Labeled his williness by a local cartoonist, even Willie Brown made fun of his mayoral reign. It's good to be the king. So what's next? His own institute. One that he hopes will be a hands-on round table for politicians. What are you doing these last great days of the... I'm packing. But can this man really pack up his political career for good? The U.S. Senate seat would be an absolutely attractive uh, space and place uh, for the... Kind that of would might be the one did. thing that would pull you out back into politics? No, the presidency would, too. Here's Willie Brown, and Willie Brown was nicknamed by none other than Bill Clinton himself as the real Slick Willie. Well, his spirit will be missed. A first-term Democrat from L.A. is now the California Assembly's new speaker. Lawmakers picked Assemblyman Fabian Nunez as the House's 66th speaker today. It's been a meteoric rise for the 37-year-old Nunez, who grew up poor in Tijuana and San Diego. Now he'll hold the most powerful post in the Assembly. Only... Uh, in a great state like California, in a great country like this, uh, can one uh, be a poor child and 30 years later be uh, selected to be the speaker of the greatest state in this country? Nunez replaces Democrat Herb Wesson of Culver City, who will retire this fall. You know, it's hard to believe we are less than two months from the California primary. That's right. Up next, former Secretary of State Bill Jones brings in some heavyweight support in his effort to bump Barbara Boxer from the U.S. Senate. And on this busy political day around the state, we get the view from both sides. On the left, Kermit Maddox. On the right, Alan Hoppenbloom. They're going to bat it loud right here in our studio. And still ahead, almost two weeks since the devastating Iran earthquake, today a miracle emerges from the rubble. Cameron Diaz's topless picks. Next, celebrity justice. The man accused of extortion tells the judge if he's guilty or not. CJ, covering the biggest cases coast to coast. Michael Jackson's accusers. The secret documents that show a woman truly taken with celebrity. Britney's ex. CJ is uncovering more details about the man she took down the aisle. Celebrity Justice, where Big Fish star Danny DeVito sounds off. There ought to be a law. Next, CJ, tonight at 11.30 on KKL Sunday, the NHL action is back when the Mighty Ducks take on Columbus at the Farm. Ducks, Blue Jays, Sunday at 5 on your pro sports leader, Chink Al 9. WBC egg whites on high speed until soft. You, me, outside. We gotta talk. A minivan? It gotta be like, be like what kind of action do you think we're gonna get in a minivan? We might as well walk around in a skirt. We had game there. Want to get a great $6 restaurant burger without the restaurant? The low-carb $6 burger, new at Carl's Jr. You heard they were coming. You're watching KCAL 9 News at 9. Former Secretary of State Bill Jones has a new goal to serve in the United States Senate. Today, he announced he'll try to unseat Barbara Boxer. The Republican was surrounded by two former governors who will serve as his campaign chairman, George Duke Majin and Pete Wilson. Jones attacked Barbara Boxer's record and spoke about the election of Arnold Schwarzenegger. And while I don't intend to uh, put myself up as the star quality that Arnold has, actually, uh, I'm more comfortable in a tractor in a field than on a Humvee. I do share our new governor's passion for putting people's interests first. Before taking on Boxer, Jones must win the Republican race. Former U.S. Treasurer Rosario Marin is also running. Both political parties are trying to come up the, cur the message and the platform to connect with voters in this critical presidential election year. It's a big deal, and our two strategists are joining us tonight. On the left, you've got Kermit Maddox. On the right, Alan Hoppenbloom. And in the middle of it all, our own KCAL 9, Pat Harvey. Hey, Pat. Hey, Sylvia and Dave, thanks for that. Gentlemen, let's jump right in it. We're going to get to national politics in a minute, but first, 
We're making news of our own here in the state of California. Governor Schwarzenegger is going to introduce his budget tomorrow, and he's already making news this evening with making a deal with the California Teachers Association to accept less money than they were owed under Proposition 98 for next year. Ellen. Well, the CTA never got along with the Democratic Governor Gray Davis. And I think the CTA is now saying, hey, listen, this is a Republican. This man might stay here for the next six years, and we better learn how to deal with him. So I think this is the first of the unions uh, that just become pragmatic and say, hey, listen, you know, buckle your seat belts. It's going to be a bumpy ride. There's going to have to be cuts and reduced spending. And I think for the first time in a long time, i got to say, that I found the California Teachers Association actually become pragmatic and is dealing with this, uh, this new governor. Oh, so well, this is a surprise move, certainly, for the, the Republicans to have that happen. Now, you must be feeling a little out of sorts tonight, Kermit. Well, yeah, as a Democrat, I'm very disappointed because I think what happens is CTA is looking out for their special interests. They're not going to get as much money as they'd like, but what they're looking for, out for, Pat, is the salaries for teachers next year. If CTA was concerned about public education, they challenged this governor on a couple things he's talking about. Not only, Pat, is he talking about tuition increases, but he's talking about reducing financial aid. We talked about that earlier. This is a big problem for students from moderate and working and low-income communities that enter at the community college level and the California State University system. So we understand everybody has to share the pain, but what troubles me about the CTA deal is they're only looking out for the interest of teachers and they're not challenging this governor basically about his whole idea about abdicating quality public education in the state I of California. Think, I think Governor think. Schwarzenegger yes. doesn't seem like a guy who wants to come off as dispass dispassionate to minorities and the poor, which is, sounds like that's what he's saying. That's well, exactly what I'm saying, no. especially with poor people. Okay, Kermit, first of all, let's go back to education. We're talking about they're going to increase spending by $2 billion. Initially, under Prop 98, they would be authorized $4 billion. Yeah. They're going to have, what, a $200 per pupil increase in education at a time where we're having to cut back. But let's talk about, you talk about, you know, spending cuts and, and you know, and the damage is going to be hurt. Kermit, if you don't want spending cuts in education, if you don't want spending cuts among, you know, grad students at UC Berkeley, where do you want those spending cuts to come from? I want everybody to share in the pain. If students are going to sacrifice, if poor people are going to sacrifice, if children are going to sacrifice, if the elderly are going to sacrifice, we don't want to tax the middle, middle class, we don't want to tax businesses, but we want to tax high income earners like Alan Halfman, Rubin, people like that. We got to get some revenue somewhere. So if you're going to ask students and poor people and others to share in the sacrifice, go after the highest income earners, 500,000 and above, you know, your, your crowd. So he and said tax he wasn't going to do that. He said he wasn't going to raise taxes. Well, and what are the Democrats going to do anyway? What, what about the legislature? What are they going to do? They're not challenging Governor Schwarzenegger as it is now. You are, Kervin. Well, about the only ones that aren't challenging Arnold Schwarzenegger are the San Francisco Bay Area Democrats, the only region in the state of California, by the way, that did not vote for Arnold Schwarzenegger to be governor. But the, first of all, you're not going to see Arnold Schwarzenegger even get a hint of interest and any interest in increased taxes, increased revenue, until the Democrats that control that state legislature come up and show that they an honest faith that they're really willing to cut the spending here in California. All the Democrats say, hey, listen, we can't do it on cut alone. Raise taxes, raise taxes, raise taxes. I want to hear where they're willing to make the cuts before we should even talk about raising taxes. Okay, Kermit, we're going to move on to national politics real okay. quick because we have very little time left okay. here. Let's talk about uh, uh, President Bush's proposal to uh, give temporary worker status to illegal immigrants. I think three years starting out, and then after that, uh, who knows what, what time. Brilliant what kind political. of move was that? A brilliant, brilliant PR move, political. you say, Kermit? Let me tell you what. Democrats have nowhere to go because everybody's chasing the emerging Latino vote for the elections in 2004. The Republicans have nowhere to go. They love George Bush. What are they going to do? Vote for somebody who's running against him? No one's running against him. I thought it was wrong. It was purely political. But on its face, it was very, very smart because it energized the Latino votes, especially in Florida and Texas and New Mexico and some of those other places where Latino voters are going to play a major role in the November general elections in 2004. Well, some of the conservative Republicans are pretty angry about this, but Alan, you say what? Hey, this is where Governor, jo where Governor George W. Bush of Texas, and the reason he got almost half of the uh, Latino vote in Texas. The soon as George W. Bush got elected president, where was the first place he went? He went to Mexico to talk to President Fox. He was on uh, the track to p try to be progressive and reasonable to the problems of illegal immigration, particularly going across the Mexican border. This came to a halt after September 11th. But I think now he believes the climate is such that he has to express again that he really believes 
the problem of illegal immigration isn't going away by building a wall between us and Mexico or sending everybody back, and we've got to come up with pragmatic solutions. And this is the George Bush who made such promises when he ran the for president. The climate is we have an election in November 2004. That's the climate we're facing. Oh, that's right. right. Well, we're going to give Carmen the last word tonight, but we'll be okay. talking a lot more about this in the future. Gentlemen, Alan Hoffman, Bloom, Perman Maddox, thanks as usual. Sylvia Day, back to you guys. All right, Pat, thanks. Mm -hmm. Time now to take a look ahead to the top of the hour. Yeah, Carrie Kilbride joining us now with what's coming up on KCAL 9 News at 10. Carrie? Dave, Sylvia, thank you. Coming up at the top of the hour tonight, the hunt for a killer is over. We will show you the massive mountain lion that killed one man and put a woman in the hospital. Also, a judge's decision means Scott Peterson's murder trial could be held here in Southern California. And Michael Jackson makes a new home in Beverly Hills while he is giving up Neverland Ranch. Those stories and more news ahead tonight at 10. We'll see you then. Sylvia and Dave, now back to you. Okay, mm -hmm. Carrie, thanks. And still ahead here at 9, an amazing story tonight from the devastation in bomb Iran. How a man managed to survive after the quake buried him under tons of rubble. That story is next. And the success of eBay spawns a new industry. Our money man logs on with eBay consultants in a few minutes. Now, Sylvia Lopez, Dave Clark, and Byron Miranda with weather. You're watching KCAL 9 News at 9. The legal tip of the day, brought to you by 1-800-THE-LAW-2. Many people think it costs a small fortune to hire an attorney after an automobile accident. They're wrong. An attorney will work strictly on a percentage of the money you receive from the settlement, which means it doesn't cost you anything up front. Be smart. Get the right attorney, get the right advice, get justice now. Call 1-800-THE-LAW-2 to speak with an attorney. So you can get me Essencia. Essencia. Trust me, it's good. Patricia Heaton is positively nuts for something called Essencia. Uh -huh. Find out. What's Essencia? Introducing Essencia. Raising taste to a whole new level, one incredible recipe at a time. Try one. Mm -hmm. All yeah. this over a cookie? It's 43% chocolate. Essencia, exclusively at Albertsons. Anyone see my bonnet? Incredible story. Some are calling him a miracle man. We're talking about a 56-year-old man who was found alive in the rubble of that quake in southeastern Iran that killed 30,000 people. The man spent 13 days buried under rubble. Few people survive after just three days in something like that. There's no explanation of how he lived so long, but it's believed there was an unknown source of water nearby. That man is in a coma tonight, but he is alive. God bless amazing him. story, yeah. To, uh, from that to a not so amazing story, but pleasant. Our weather has been really uh, nice lately. Uh, We're happy spectacular. with it. Spectacular. Yeah, yeah, fabulous, spectacular. He, he hope... takes all the credit for it. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, I don't take credit for that because when it's bad, then I get in trouble. <laughs> so we will say it's all up to God, right, guys? Yeah, right. Outside we go. This is a good-looking forecast, but it's not good-looking at LAX. Some fog. We have some moisture in the atmosphere. It dropped down to its dew point, created the fog. Fog is nothing but a cloud on the ground and that's what they're seeing there's some foggy clouds at lax check with the airlines before you head out just in case because you might see some delays skyview doppler nothing happening let me show you the temperatures across southland that will be the story over the next couple of days currently we're going to start in downtown la at 53 one degree below that is 52 in oxnard let's drive up to the chilly spot on the map lancaster at 37 56 in burbank encino and sherman oaks 48 in Riverside, low 50s down in Orange County, Santa Ana, San Diego, up to L.A., through Santa Barbara, for the most part clear. But look, here come the clouds. At 5 p.m., the clouds were way over here, over the Pacific. Now they're starting to move on shore, and it looks like we'll have clouds in the morning. We already saw that at LAX. Temperatures? 8 a.m., 42 in Murrieta. 50 in Newhall. How about 45 in Palm Springs? 40 in Hemet, 34 in Apple Valley. Over the next 24 hours, this frontal system should stay north of us, but it may sag south just far enough to give us some clouds through the morning hours, and then we should see some p.m. sunshine. Temperatures in the 70s, 71 in Burbank, especially if we see the sun early, it could get up to 73 in Ventura, but right now we're going with 70. 68 in Newhall, 72 in Hemet, 72 in Palm Springs, 72 downtown L.A. Look at your weekend forecast. 
by Sunday. Dave, Sylvia, 76 degrees. We're going to be dancing. Thank you for that applause in the street. Back to you guys. We're dancing in the streets. Okay, Byron. The success of eBay, the internet auction company, has led to a whole new industry, eBay Auction Helpers. A new auction assistance company is open in Pasadena. KCAL 9's money man, Alan Mendelson, checked it out. This is the first I Sold It store on South Lake Avenue in Pasadena. It caters to consumers who want to sell things on eBay, but don't have the time or the resources to do it themselves. Elise Wetzel started the company just three weeks ago. We have a professional digital photography setup where we take some great photos of their item. We have a listing station with experienced eBay sellers who post the item onto eBay. We hold the item in inventory, and we answer questions during the auction that interested bidders might have. When the auction ends, I Sold It collects the money and ships the item to the winner and mails their customer a check. The company will accept items that are likely to sell for $20 or more and merchandise that it can ship, nothing too big. I think it's very convenient for people who don't have the time and, or the skills to put their stuff on eBay. Have you gone on eBay yourself? Or? Yeah, I've gone on eBay. I've never bought anything on eBay, but I've gone on eBay to see what's available. I sold it will help you research your item to see what it might sell for. And it has fees for its services, which are about 30% of the selling price. Now, other selling services like this have a different fee structure, so you should shop around. A lot of companies like I Sold It are now springing up nationwide, even worldwide. Some of them are attracting venture capital in the millions of dollars. Some of them will go public soon. I Sold It is now selling franchises and plans to have 15 locations in Southern California open soon. The I Sold It store is at 260 South Lake Avenue, Pasadena, 626-584-0440 for information. That's your money. Alan Mendelson, KCAL 9 News. Now coming up in sports, what's up with the injury riddled Lakers? Is help on the way? Uh, find out when the Lakers' two big men are coming back. You want to know that? The great Darren Horton is all the good news next. Introducing the all-new Dodge Durango. With all-new power. All-new room. All-new ride. All-new interior. All new capability, all new safety features, all new capacity. One part power, one part comfort, one all new Durango. Starting under 26.6. See it at your local Dodge dealer today. Now, get today's top news stories and weather. Simple, easy to read and sent directly to your computer. Visit KCAL9.com and sign up for KCAL9 News Blast. The Cal Spa Super Salathon is here. Over 10,000 factory special spas, saunas, gazebos, pool tables, and more will be offered to the public at 30 to 70 cents on the dollar. Factory reps will be on hand competing for your business. At any price. Get a five-person Cal Spa for only $16.88. An $8,000 Super Cal Spa and Gazebo Pack. Just $38.99. Over 10,000 spas, gazebos, pool tables, bars, and barbecue grills. Our factory price to sell now. With no payment, no interest for 12 full months. January 10th and 11th. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. At the Convention Center in Ontario. Sometimes when people come into H&R Block, it's like looking in a mirror. I see myself years ago. I remember the pressure. Student loans, overdue bills. Now I get to help. With instant money, they can walk in with their taxes and walk out with a loan check. It's like I'm looking in a mirror and helping myself. Only I look younger. Instant money loans, another advantage of H&R Block. Good night, baby. Good night, honey. Sweetie, you want me to be happy, right? Of course I do. You know I love your burgers, but just for a change, could you make a chicken monster taco for me? Please? You know, like your beef monster taco, but made with delicious chicken instead? Consider it done. Honey, you want me to be happy, right? Sports now with Darren. Darren says help is on the way. He's bringing Bring Darren back. for the Bring Lakers. They need something. Bring I, <laughs> I tell you. On the Alaska Airlines Sports Report, 2004 has not been kind to the Lakers. They are 0-4 in the new year. 
And it all coincides with the injuries. The Lakers have lost six of seven without Carl Malone, all four of the games that Shaq has missed. Meanwhile, here's a sight for sore eyes. Carl Malone practicing hard today. He and trainer Gary Beatty went through a number of drills, but Phil Jackson says they are proceeding cautiously. We're just we're just not going to push this. This is something that was, you know, we thought it was quick recovery. It wasn't quick recovery. It was as serious as we thought it might be at the beginning, and the doctor projected as the beginning. And the standard operating thing on that is four to six weeks. And I don't know what the timetable is now, but I'm sure it's getting close to four weeks. Phil added that it's a long shot, but Malone could return to action next Wednesday. That also could be the day that Shaquille O'Neal returns today. An MRI on his strained calf came back negative. So no structural damage, but the swelling does persist. And again today, the team says that Shaq will miss at least the next two games, insinuating he could return next Wednesday against uh, Denver. Bill Callahan's days of unemployment are over. The former Raiders head coach has been hired to take over one of the most storied football programs in college football. The Omaha World Herald is reporting that Callahan will be named the head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Nebraska fired head coach Frank Stolich on November 29th. They've been looking for a replacement ever since. Callahan was let go by the Raiders last week, a year after guiding the silver and black to the Super Bowl. PGA season opener, Tiger Woods, a sporadic beginning today. Bogey's one, birdie's three, double bogey's five, birdie's six, and that's a bird here on eight. That got him to even. Then on 14, another birdie to get to one under. Meanwhile, Stuart Appleby left Tiger in the dust. After bogeying number one, he went on to birdie. Eight of the remaining 17 holes closed the show with a birdie on 18, a 66. He's at seven under, top the board. As for Tiger, look at this eagle on 18. He's at two under, five off the pace after one round. Former Pepperdine and UCLA coach Jim Herrick scouting the waves tonight. Pepperdine taking on their arch rivals, Gonzaga, first half. Corey Violet to the hole for the slam. Zags up 13 at the break. Second half, they move the ball around. They kick it out to Blake Steph. He can really shoot it. An NBA three, he had 19 in the game. Number 16, Gonzaga beats Pepperdine by 17, 87 to 70. College basketball tonight up in... Uh, the Apple State, it's UCLA and USC, both victorious. We're going to have highlights coming up on Sports Central at 1045. Also, uh, another hiring made in the NFL. All that coming up, 1045 on Very Sports good. Central. We'll see you then, man. Thanks, Derek. Right. Derek. A royal send-off for the crown jewel of the seven seas. Would you believe the queen introduces the queen when we come back? And ahead of 10, salmon may not be as good for our diets as we thought. Why there are new warnings about the popular fish. The Sports Report is brought to you every night by Alaska Airlines with low fi A queen christened by a queen, and man, what a ceremony it was. The I Queen Mary II billed as the world's largest ocean liner. And Britain's Queen Elizabeth II was among 2,000 people invited to this historical event. There it was after tremendous words, the traditional bottle of champagne was smashed against the bow of the Queen Mary II. It'll make its maiden voyage next week from Southampton, England to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and we say bon voyage. That'll do it for us at 9. I'm Dave Clark. And I'm Sylvia Lopez. We know you have many choices for news. We thank you for choosing KCAL 9. And there's another hour of news ahead. KCAL 9 News at 10 starts right now. A mountain lion jumps two mountain bikers in Orange County, killing one and injuring another. Tonight, though, the killer is hunted down and carried away. A major decision in Modesto. Could Scott Peterson's murder trial be held in Southern California? Plus, a man shoots an armored guard and is caught on tape getting away with the money. And sending men and women to Mars. Believe it or not, it's in the works. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Harvey. And I'm Kerry Kilbride. This is KCAL 9 News at 10. You're watching KCAL 9 News at 10. A massive mountain lion goes on the attack in Orange County Park. 